Hey, what's up guys? Fabio here once again and I want to welcome everybody back to another video. And today, um, what I'm going to do is, uh, first of all, probably from here on out, other than live streams, I'm just going to shoot all my videos on this video camera that I have because I probably should have did that from the beginning. <laughs> and um, the laptop that I typically use... Um, I think that is kind of on its last legs. It's just not working anymore. Um, so instead of shooting all my videos on there, I might as well just shoot all my videos on a regular video camera. We have a better microphone. I actually know what the fuck I can do with this. So, I mean, it's not like I didn't go to school for this or anything. So might as well. I mean, it just makes sense. Ah, but, yeah. So what I'm going to do is... I wanted to get all these done before uh, 2022 was over because I wanted to count down, you know, movies from different years. You know, 1982 will be the first one. And I just didn't have time because of, you know, the holidays and the new job and everything. So I figured, hey, it doesn't really matter when I take a look at these lists or these years or whatever. Yeah, I like to tie it in with the anniversary. It just kind of makes more sense. But, you know, why don't we just kick the year off with that? So what I'm going to do is we'll start with 1982. I'll be talking about my top 25 movies from that year. And then we will go to 87, 92, 97, 2002, 2007, 2012, 2017. And I will kind of space these in between paid requests um, you know, just to kind of get them done and then also do some other things in between to kind of just get it going here, you know, in the beginning of the year. Because I do have a bunch of paid requests to catch up on, but I also wanted to get these videos up because they're always fun to do. I like to typically do them at the end of the year. I just didn't have time. So again, I don't really think it matters, but let's just get into it. So 1982, <clears throat> we're going to take a look again at my top 25 films. And we're just going to start with number 25. <clears throat> Excuse me. We have the Clint Eastwood movie Firefox. Now, I know a lot of people don't like this movie, but I do. Um, it's a little bit outside of Clint Eastwood's wheelhouse. It still has, you know, the adventure element. It still has a little bit of an action element to it, which is nice. But I like how they have, like, this super plane that he has to go and steal I've always liked Firefox. Again, <clears throat> excuse me. I know it's a movie that, that doesn't get a lot of love, but but I like it. Is it the best Clint Eastwood movie? No. Is it the worst Clint Eastwood movie? Hell no. But I like it for what it is. Uh, number 24, Evil Speak. I included Evil Speak because, number one, I actually quite like the movie. <clears throat> and number two, Clint Howard didn't really get to star in a whole lot of movies. Um, the, I mean, other than Evil Speak, the only one was Ice Cream Man. But I like Evil Speak. This was a movie that was kind of infamous because it was on the video nasty list over there in the UK for many years. Um, I like it. I think there's a lot of good practical effects. There's a good supporting cast in the movie. And again, I mainly included this movie on my list because Clint Howard got to play a lead, which he never did. Unfortunately, he never really got to play the lead much. So I figured, why not? Number 23, Airplane 2, the sequel. Very underrated movie. Never gets talked about. I think it's just as good as the first. Um, that's another one that I need to pick up. I think that has a Blu-ray now. But I've always liked Airplane and Airplane 2. I included the first Airplane on my list for 1980. I have to include the the second movie because, again, it's just a really fun sequel. It's very underrated. Again, it never gets talked about, but it's a pretty funny movie. Uh, number 22, had to include the Beastmaster. Um, I would say probably Don Coscarell. No, not his best. His best movie outside of Phantasm is definitely Bubba Hotep. Sorry. But maybe his third best movie outside of the Phantasm films. But I love the Beastmaster. I actually like Beastmaster 2 more than the first one. And I believe I included that on my list of 1991 films. 
but I have to include the original. I've always liked the franchise. I've always liked the character, and um, I'm so glad that Vinegar Syndrome put it out on Blu-ray a couple years ago. I was very, very surprised, number one, that they were going to do that, and very happy, number two, that they did, because the film definitely deserved it, and it is kind of an unsung classic you know, it's definitely a cult classic, but it's a it's a really fun movie. Um, do I like it more than Conan the Barbarian? No, but it's fun. And it, excuse me. Of course, Conan will cover in a little bit here. Number twenty one have to include the Slumber Party Massacre. Um, I reviewed all of the the Massacre movies last year, and Slumber Party Massacre was a paid request, which was a lot of fun and. Yes, um, very influential slasher movie. Uh, Roger Corman, again, kind of launched a whole multiple movie series with the word Massacre in the title, and they were all kind of the same movie, but they're fun. But Slumber Party Massacre, I definitely think, stands out, particularly, particularly out of the early 80s slasher movies. It was definitely influential. Kevin Williamson definitely was inspired by the movie to make Scream amongst you know many others and it's just a fun 80s slasher movie and it's re it's getting um well no it's already there's already a version that has a 4k transfer but it is getting a 4k later in the year um because you know scream factory has clearly run out of ideas so that's why they keep releasing everything on 4k not that did i say that anyway um but, uh, oh, good God, Slumber Party Massacre is a really fun movie. If you haven't seen it, check it out. If you're a fan of 80s slasher movies, you definitely need to, to do yourself a favor and check the movie out because it's a classic. Number 20, Night Shift. I mean, what more could you say? I believe it was Ron Howard's directorial debut. It was one of Michael Keaton's first big movies. Um, it is just a really fun 80s comedy. I think there's a Blu-ray. I'm not entirely sure. But I really enjoyed Night Shift. I mean, I mean, again, what more could you say about that? Number 19, Pink Floyd's The Wall. I have to include Pink Floyd's The Wall um, on my list of, of top movies of the year because it is just such a trippy, balls-out movie. Um, you know, it, I think it was one of the first movies of its kind where you know the album had already been out and they decided to make a movie based on the album and use all the music um but i absolutely love pink floyd's the wall whether it's the the album or the film itself i wish you know we all wish that there will be a blu-ray release it probably won't happen because david gilmore and um that fucking prick roger waters can't get along so there probably will never be an official blu-ray release of Pink Floyd's The Wall, but um, it is a great movie. It is a brilliant movie, and if you're a fan of Pink Floyd and you haven't seen it, you got to check it out. It was definitely way ahead of its time. I, I would also say that. Number eighteen. I know I'm gonna get shit for this, but I don't care. Grease two. Yes, I like Grease two. Sue me. I don't care. Um, I've always liked Grease 2 ever since I was a kid. Is it as good as the first movie? No, of course it's not as good as the first movie. But I think it is a fun sequel. It helped launch uh, Michelle Pfeiffer's career because the next year, 1983, she was in some movie called Scarface and that made her a star. But you could definitely see why Michelle Pfeiffer became one of the biggest actresses ever, I think, at least in, in my opinion because she definitely had that it factor and that star quality and it shows in Grease 2. Um, Adrian Zemed is also a lot of fun in the movie. I've always liked him as an actor. Uh, Shooter McGavin, Christopher McDonald's in it. They bring some of the characters back from the first movie. I like a lot of the, the musical numbers. I, I don't care. I like Grease 2. Yes, it's campy, but it's fun. That's kind of the point. But you know, I've always liked it. Again, I know people are definitely going to give me shit for that, but I don't care. It's my list. Um, number 17, another film that was way ahead of its time, Tron. You have to include Tron on the best eight 1982 films list. A movie that really pushed the limits of special effects at the time. I think it's really underrated because I don't think that the movie gets the credit that it really deserves. I know... A couple of few years ago, actually, no, 10 years ago, it's been that long, Jesus, 
Um, they tried to do that sequel, which did not work, in my opinion. Um, you know, how how could it have worked? At least, it, that's just how I feel. But Tron is just a great, brilliant, original movie that really pushed the envelope of what they could do out of special effects. And I think because of that film, you know, CG kind of became a thing. And, you know, I think it kind of all goes back to Tron. Um, but I do think that the movie is underrated because it kind of gets lost in the shuffle, I think. But it is such a, again, it's such a original brilliant movie and if you haven't seen it what are you what are you waiting for you got to watch tron um number 16 have to include poltergeist yes the debate is up in the air of who actually directed the film but needless to say on that subject it is a classic it is a great movie um i i wish that there was a better blu-ray but uh steven spielberg won't allow that to happen because of you know who really directed the movie um but it doesn't matter because, again, I'm still going to enjoy it. It's a classic. Uh, number 15, Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Another great movie. I'm glad that we finally got a decent-looking Blu-ray release because the original Blu-ray looked god-awful. The, uh, the original Universal Blu-ray looked like a fucking VHS transfer. But it is a classic. Um, it's a way better version of fucking Euphoria and all this shit that comes out now. Because, you know, number one, it's actually entertaining. And number two, um, you know, it's a classic because if it wasn't, no one would be talking about it 40 years later. But I love Fast Times at Ridgemont High. It launched a lot of people's careers. Uh, Nicolas Cage, I think it was his first movie. So there you go. Um, great soundtrack as well. And, of course, you know, the best scene in the movie is when Phoebe Cates' top falls off, as we all know. Because it's fucking Phoebe Cates. And she was breathtakingly beautiful back in the day. So there you go. Uh, number 14, They Call Me Bruce. I love this movie. Uh, it is a classic. I have it on Blu-ray somewhere. I wish the sequel was on Blu-ray, but it's not. But They Call Me Bruce took the Bruce Bloitation thing and turned it into a parody, and it's fucking brilliant. Uh, the guy that played in it was Johnny Yoon. Johnny Yoon was actually Korean, which makes it even funnier. And he would go on The Tonight Show a lot with Johnny Carson. Unfortunately, he died a, a couple of years ago. But I don't know why he never became a bigger star. I guess he got pigeonholed. But if you have not seen They Call Me Bruce and you are a diehard Bruce Lee fan like I am, you have to watch it. It is a hilarious parody film. Number 13, Creepshow. Have to put Creepshow on the list. One of uh, probably my favorite horror anthology film. I love that it's a tribute to the old uh, Tales from the Crypt comic books and uh, Vault of Horror and the other titles that came out back then. I love the the comic book style to the movie. Excuse me. Um, I like. I actually like all the stories. Um, you know, the only the only one. Well, actually, no. I do like all the stories. Creepshow 2, the only story that I really loved was Chief Woodenhead, which I didn't even include Creepshow 2 on the 87 list. It missed the cut. Um, it did miss the cut. It did, actually. Um, I think Creepshow 2 kind of falls down a couple pegs, but I absolutely love the original. Again, my favorite horror anthology film of all time, in my opinion. Number 12, um, this is a movie that I definitely have a soft spot for because it was filmed in Baltimore, where I'm from, Diner. Diner is a great movie. Um, you want to talk about a film that launched people's careers. It launched everybody in the movie. Uh, Kevin Bacon, Daniel Stern, Mickey Rourke, Steve Gutenberg, Paul Reiser, Ellen Barkin. Um, yeah, Diner became such a huge movie especially around this area where it was filmed you know the whole movie was filmed near here um the fact that they didn't really have a script they basically improvised the whole movie i think is another thing that makes it really work and you know it's a nice portrait of a very simpler time in the world you know a time that people would like to go back there is a blu-ray but i wish it had more extras because it deserves it at least in my opinion And I can't really decide which movie I like more in the uh, 
the Baltimore series that Barry Levinson did. Either that or Tin Men, which Tin Men is included on my 87 list, so we'll cover that in the next video. But yeah, but I love Diner. Number 11, Conan the Barbarian, the movie that made Arnold Schwarzenegger a star. Um, I like the sequel more. I just think it's more fun. But Conan the Barbarian is a classic. I did get a chance, speaking of Arnold, um, I did get a chance to go see it in the theaters uh, when they had it last month, and it was great to see it all blown up, and it was loud and everything. But Conan the Barbarian is a classic. Again, it's the movie that made Arnold Schwarzenegger a, a star. Terminator made him a superstar, but Conan made him kind of, you know, oh, he's going to be the guy. So there you go. Number 10, Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan. I think, you know, you'd be a fool not to include this on your list. But I love Star Trek II. It is the movie that saved the Star Trek franchise because the first movie didn't really do that well. Even though I have always really liked the first movie because it's pure science fiction. The sequels, they added action and adventure, and I love that. But I still think that the Star Trek The Motion Picture is very underrated. And I need to get that that 4K that came out that has all the different versions because they finally put all the versions on one disc and everything, so I have to get that. But The Wrath of Khan is just such a great sequel. Definitely one of the greatest sequels ever made. Like I said, it saved Star Trek, so, I mean, you have to include it on your list. It is a classic. Um, number nine, Blade Runner. I have to include Blade Runner, one of my favorite movies ever made, one of my favorite science fiction films. Of course, it came out the same day as another movie that we'll cover a little bit later here. Um, and it didn't do well when it came out because E.T. had just come out and Blade Runner is like this dark, nihilistic vision of the future, which kind of came true, to be honest. Um, the only thing that didn't really come true is that there's cyborgs running around. So, I mean, maybe. Not yet, but maybe. But I love Blade Runner. Just... It, even now, 40 years later, I still think that it's one of the most visually impressive movies ever made. It's another film like Tron that really pushed the envelope of what they could do with special effects at the time. And they just made it work. Um, you know, it was, it was not an easy movie to make. I think that is all very well documented at this point. But the payoff was worth it. Yeah, the movie didn't do well when it first came out but over the years because of VHS and because of cable it became a cult classic and then now it has become one of the greatest science fiction movies ever made um, it's, a sh it's a shame that Ridley Scott and Harrison Ford never did another movie together because I think they complemented each other well and it would have been cool maybe not them doing a Blade Runner sequel although I really enjoyed Blade Runner 2049 I definitely would include that on my favorite list of movies that came out in 2017, which I think we will be covering a little bit later here, if I'm not mistaken. Um, it is included on my list, but it's a short list, but it's in there. Um, you know, but it, it would have been cool if they did another film together. The musical score by Vangelis, who we lost, I think, earlier, or last year, I still think it's 2022, of course. Um, the music by Vangelis is top-notch. Uh, Rucker Howard, may he rest in peace as well, was a great villain. It had all the elements of a classic movie. And again, over 40 years later, it's really interesting to see the trajectory of that film. And yes, I think it's one of the greatest movies ever made, and it's always been one of my favorite science fiction films. All right, number eight, uh, the first Chuck Norris movie on this list, Force Vengeance. I love Force Vengeance. It is just 90 minutes of Chuck Norris kicking ass. And, you know, I know Chuck isn't a really big fan of the movie because it was supposed to be his, it was supposed to be part of a three-picture deal he did with MGM, but he didn't like what they wanted him to do, so he ended up actually getting out of his contract. But Force Vengeance is a lot of fun. It's just Chuck Norris being a badass, like we all know that he is, running around Hong Kong, just kicking the shit out of people for 90 minutes. And it's all done for real. It's all practical. And it never gets old. I This is one of the few Chuck Norris movies that's not on Blu-ray now that Sidekicks is getting an, an official release. It's nice. 
but uh, where is the Blu-ray for Force Vengeance? I mean, come on, Warner Archive. Y'all could have made a killing on the damn movie. But love Force Vengeance. Number seven, Death Wish 2. I love Death Wish 2. It's, it definitely is a canon film. Um, it's sleazy. It's grimy. It's dirty. It's nasty. Um, it definitely is a good representation of early's 80 L.A., um, early 80 yeah early 80s la i can't talk words are bad um like angel which is a movie that i just reviewed but i like it more than the first i like how bronson actually gets the guys that fucked up his family in the sequel um i'm not a fan of the rape scenes i think i've made that abundantly clear every time i watch the movie i fast forward through that because they don't need to be there um you know, the Death Wish movies also launch a lot of people's careers. Lawrence Fishburne, it was one of his first movies. Um, that Jimmy Page score never gets old. And it's just a solid sequel. Again, I think it's a better movie than the first. I like it more than the first. And again, it is definitely a canon film. And I love that it's sleazy and it's grimy and it's nasty and it's dirty. And they don't make movies like that anymore. And they probably never will. So there you go. Uh, number, I fucked this up. I put these backwards, I think. Yeah, number six, I have to put 48 Hours, the movie that launched Eddie Murphy. Um, it is a classic buddy cop film. It's one of the best buddy cop movies. Um, him and Nick Nolte had great chemistry together. It's a shame that we never got a third movie because I think we could have had a, a good, another good one. It's a shame that the second movie got fucked with because I actually quite like that movie. That's just me. But 48 Hours is a classic. I don't think anyone would disagree. I don't think anyone would not include it on their list. But I love 48 Hours. Number five, I have to include Rocky III. Um, Rocky III, I love. I think it's a great sequel. You know, it's definitely an 80s movie. It has that 80s trademark to it, much like Rocky IV did. Uh, Mr. T was a great bad guy. I love the motif of how Apollo Creed was Rocky's enemy and now he's his friend, which of course a million other movies copied that. But Rocky III never gets old. I don't care what anyone says. Um, number four, Silent Rage. One of my favorite Chuck Norris movies. If you've never seen it, do yourself a favor and watch it. It is Chuck Norris versus Michael Myers. Um, I liked how Chuck was doing something different he wanted to try different things that's one of the things that i admire about him as an actor is he the greatest actor in the world no and chuck said that himself but the fact that he always every once in a while not always but the fact that every once in a while he would try to do something different and reach out to different audiences i think is what made him work um same with van damme same with arnold same with stallone the fact that they were willing to do something different, unlike Steven Seagal, no disrespect, but it's true, you know, makes it work. But Silent Rage is a lot of fun. The musical score is awesome. And, I mean, it has the, the classic Chuck Norris elements. I mean, there's a scene where he destroys a whole biker bar. So you have the great Chuck Norris fight scenes. But it also is a horror movie. It's a slasher movie. It's a killer, you know, guy movie. And it's fun. And I love Silent Rage. Number three, Halloween 3, Season of the Witch. I don't care. It took 40 year, 30 years for this movie to get respect, but I love Halloween 3. It might be my favorite Halloween movie. It's very debatable with me, but Halloween 3 might actually be my favorite Halloween film. Um, I love the fact that they killed Michael Myers in part two and they wanted to do something different every year. I wish that they did that. Now, in some alternate movie universe, that did happen where Halloween 3 worked in 82 and we got like 9 million Halloween movies, but they were all different. I would like to go there. I would like to see what that universe is like. Um, but I love Halloween 3. Tom Atkins gets the star. Tom Atkins did not get the star in a lot of movies. Um, it still has the elements of a Halloween film because John Carpenter and Deborah Hill wrote and did everything on the movie. So it's not like some guy from wherever the fuck came in and it was completely different. It still had everything that you wanted in a Halloween movie. 
Um, the musical score is fantastic. It's my favorite Halloween musical score. The ones with Michael Myers, it would be Halloween 2, but Halloween 3 is my favorite musical score. I love the ending. Um, it is a classic. I And I was never one of those people that... Well, actually, no. I was. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm thinking about Predator 2, because I love Predator 2. Because Predator 2, I was never one of the... Well, Arnold's not in it. I can't watch it. No, I've always liked Predator 2. But I will admit, when I was younger, when I was a kid... I refused to watch Halloween 3 because it didn't have Michael Myers. I was one of those people, but I'm glad that my cousin changed my mind. And I absolutely love Halloween 3. And I'm glad that people like it. I mean, again, it only took 30 years when when that Blu-ray came out from Scream Factory, which was a complete, um, a complete shock when that got released. But I'm glad that it did. And I'm glad that people finally woke up to that film. And there's still people that are, are watching it now 40 years later for the first time and they love it as well so the movie got its just desserts which is nice number two first blood i first blood has to be in the number two spot because it saved sylvester stallone's career because at this time the only movies that made money for him were rocky everything else that he did was a flop even though i like a lot of those movies i really like paradise alley Fist is a really good drama. I like, um, what the hell was the other movie? I like Victory. Pele. Pele just passed away. I like Victory. Um, you know, I like a lot of those Stallone movies that came out in between the Rocky movies. Uh, Nighthawks. I fucking love Nighthawks. Um, but First Blood saved his career because now Stallone was the action guy and people can argue whether First Blood is an action movie or not it's a fucking action movie, it is um, it paved the way for the one man army movies of the 80's and the 90's uh, First Blood was a game changer First Blood is definitely an action film I don't understand why that is a debate, I don't understand why that is a question whether it's an action film or not because it clearly is um, but it's a classic Rambo is one of the greatest characters of all time. I think people would agree. Do I like the second and the third movie more? Yes, I do. But First Blood is the movie that created everything, so you have to give it the respect that it deserves. And I have to include it as number two. And finally, my favorite film of 1982. This is probably not a shock to anybody, but John Carpenter's The Thing. Um, again, it came out the same day as Blade Runner, which is crazy. Uh, imagine going to the theater in 1982 and seeing both movies on opening day. God, I wish I had a time machine. But John Carpenter's The Thing was another film, much like Blade Runner, where it got destroyed when it came out. Everyone hated John Carpenter. How could he make a movie like this? How could he do this? Um, it didn't make that much money. But over the years, because of, v of VHS and TV and everything else... It's become one of the greatest movies ever made. People realized that they were stupid back in 1982 to call the movie all these horrible things. Um, it's one of the greatest horror films ever made. It's one of the greatest remakes of all time because, yes, it is a remake. And for people that say that I don't like remakes, well, here's your fucking proof um, that I like remakes. Some remakes, not all. Um, the special effects, again, they absolutely push the limits of what they could do. It's all practical. It's all real. God bless Rob Bottin. Um, it made you believe that this shit was real. It made you believe that the thing was real and it was going to come and it was going to kill you. Um, the cast is excellent. The musical score does not get any better than this. Um, I was able to see the movie in theaters when it played uh, earlier la or, yeah, last year in a packed it was packed. A movie that was 40 years old was packed. Whatever came out that week, nobody saw that shit. But the thing was fucking packed. And it was amazing to see one of my favorite movies of all time on the big screen, blown up, loud as fuck. Cannot complain. Again, one of the all-time classics. Um, again, 40 years later, people are still talking about this movie. It ain't going anywhere, and it is also a Christmas film. Don't you try and deny it, but John Carpenter's The Thing is a Christmas film. It takes place during the first week of winter, which is typically the week of Christmas. 
So it is a Christmas movie. Suck my dick. Anyway. <laughs> but anyway, guys, um, I hope you enjoyed my list of my top 25 films of 1982. As always, let me know what you think. Let me know what some of your favorite movies are. I always like to hear that type of stuff. And we will catch you on the next video, which will be counting down, uh, including more movies, because it's a great year, like 82, but there were movies I couldn't leave off. So we will be taking a look at my top 40. That makes sense, top 40, like music, of 1987. So until then, as always, thank you guys for watching. Take care, and we will talk to all of you later. See you.